Hi, my name is Adnan Hasbi and I'd like to wish you a warm welcome of another episode in the rambling of an analyst. So in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about my investment style. And one of the reasons why we're doing this episode is that uh, one of the subs has been asking me and I think that it'd be really beneficial for you guys to see how, much, how I am investing right now. And I'm going to tell you the philosophy behind how I stock pick and the steps behind how I pick a particular stock. Okay, so this episode will be broken down into three sections. The first is how I stock pick. The second is how I categorize the stocks on my investment. I have the more I have the common value, growth, and also dividend uh, categories. But having said that, you can see that I have another two more categories which is relatively new or not that common, which is core and also trading. So I'm going to explain to you how I categorize all of the stocks. And the final bit is that I'm going to share a little bit of my portfolio with you guys. That way, um, we can take some lessons from everything which I'm sharing with you guys. So I want to be 100% transparent with you guys. So, okay. So when I first pick the stocks, this is how or this is what the process uh, I take in order for me to pick a stock. Um, I normally pick a stock based on two broad methodologies. The first one would be I look at the top down whereby I would read news and I'll look at trends which are happening around. Okay. Uh, over here, it could be any economic trends or it could be any new government policies or maybe the new government budget, for instance. And the news, uh, I think the biggest news for the year is the pandemic which is happening globally. So that's, that is my investment thesis. I just look at the news and I see what sectors would benefit from this. The second, um, the sec the second way, once I already identified um, the, I guess, the, the, the prospective sectors which will benefit. Next, I would look at the bottom up. So bottom up, what this really means is I look at the companies for every sector, right? I look at, say, for instance, let's go to the next slide. For instance, if I think that there may be a pandemic, right? So these are the sectors which I think, which may be impacted maybe adversely or positively. So I just kind of list down the sectors which may be impacted from this particular uh, scenario. And uh, as we know, uh, the first is the medical sector, whereby I covered the glove sector uh, as early as the 1st of February on this channel. Aside from that, I think that, um, I guess these sectors are not beneficiaries. These sectors uh, were at worstly impacted the travel sector the financial sector and also the hotels if they were adversely impacted the whole intention is if the stock is oversold that is where we can actually buy the stock uh, where the intrinsic value is higher than the market price so hope so the whole strategy over here is if the market oversold that stock we want to catch it we want to catch it as the, the stock is oversold. And once the, the, the stock corrects at its intrinsic value, that is where we sell that particular stock. Okay, so over here, we can see that the medical industry, I covered it in the 1st of February. And then uh, we covered Air Asia for the longest time on this channel. And quite recently, I started talking about the financial industry and also the hotel uh, industry. Uh, in uh, September of this year. Okay, so the five broad categories are number one, value, right? Stocks which I may categorize as value. So over here, this is how it's done. Or this is how I do it, uh, basically. I look at the market price of the stock and I also look at the intrinsic value of the stock. So let me break down what intrinsic value really means. Basically, we look at the stock, we do a forecast of the stock's cash flow, right? Next question is, how does one do a forecast? Typically, when the management gives news in the market or 
when there is maybe positive news flows, for instance, if there is a medical company which came up with a drug or cure for this particular virus, um, maybe we could see like a spike in the market price. Well, if maybe there is adverse news or bad news, um, maybe there is a fire or maybe or maybe there is a drop in demand for uh, for certain products, what may happen is that the stock price may drop, right? So based on the news flows, we will kind of forecast the future cash flows. And if the discounted future cash flows is more than the market price, right? This is where we invest in that particular stock. Uh, the intrinsic value is much higher than the market price, right? So that's the first thing. Uh, the we will look at the future cash flows and how we know the and how we forecast the future cash flows is based on the management press releases. Um, as an analyst, uh, I guess, or the industry as a whole, typically every quarter the management will have quarterly briefings with the analysts, and this is where the analysts may ask questions uh, on how the the management is going to carry their business moving forward. If the management gives good news to the analysts, this is where the analysts would change their um, target price accordingly. The other ways we can actually uh, get the intrinsic value, or the other way uh, we, we can guess that the intrinsic value is lower than the market price, is when the PE of the stock that we want to buy is lower than the industrial PE, or the price to book of the stock that we're looking at is lower than the industrial uh, price to book value. Okay, so that that is how we we kind of see whether the 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 stock is undervalued, and we just kind of buy that stock, hope, hoping that it will uh, the market price will hit the intrinsic value. Okay, so note to the wise over here, some stocks may be trading may have always been trading below the industrial uh, averages, and one of the reasons why is maybe that particular stock is less efficient, or maybe that particular stock has less margins compared to the rest of the industry. But again, this is, uh, I don't want to complicate things. Let's make things very simple. Let us assume that uh, everyone is performing the same way uh, as the overall industry. And, and if uh, we find a particular stock which is trading a bit below the industrial averages, this is where it is a bit of a discount compared to the rest of the industry and this is where we may be able to buy the stock at much cheaper if we want to enter into that industry. Uh, the second category would be stocks which I will categorize as growth. And over here, uh, how I kind of pick this particular stocks is based on what's happening. So right now, as we know, uh, with the whole pandemic, there is an increase in demands for gloves. Aside from that, this channel covered two other companies which we, we, we think that there will be an increase in demand. Number one, as I mentioned to you, when I go for my morning breakfast, I wanted to have my roti chanai fix and I was trying to find a, roti, uh, a person that made pre-packed roti chanai and this is how I found Kawan Food. Over here, the stock price was 86, uh, 86 cents and today it is 2 ringgit and 19 cents. So it's a bit above 200% in a couple of months. The next sector or the next uh, stock which I was looking at was the delivery stocks. I noticed that more and more people are staying at home, more and more people are ordering things, uh, and more and more people are actually buying things online. One of the beneficiaries or one of the listed beneficiaries would be the uh, career guys. And over here, I, I we identified one of these stocks. Uh, and um, yeah, it was at 13 cents and today it is at 42 cents. So it's uh, almost 400%, which is kind of cool. Okay, the third category would be the dividend stocks. Over here, what how I'll categorize uh, dividend stock is based on the dividend yields, okay? So how I'll look at dividend yields is the dividend paid out divided by the stock price, right? So if the stock price falls, the dividend yields will increase. There is an inverse relationship, right? So over here, um, another way of looking at this is returns on stocks, say on a per annum basis, right? Or, we, or in other words, or another way of looking at it is assuming if you rent a property, right? 
the rentals that we get from from the property versus the price that we paid for the property that will give us the rental yield so it's, just, it's the same way of kind of looking at it so how i actually categorize stocks as dividend stocks is based on its dividend yields as so as i mentioned to you asb is one of my benchmarks so so long if it uh, hits the seven or eight percent dividend yield this is where i'll categorize that particular stock as a dividend paying stocks and as i mentioned to you uh, some of them were the banking stocks and at one time uh, maybank was having a, a dividend yield of eight percent so it looked relatively attractive for me at least okay the fourth category which uh, i kind of break it down into is core holdings this is where i learned this from some of the asset management companies whereby they have a cost of capital or cost or operating cost right so assuming if the operating cost is maybe five or six percent of the total fund right so that will be our overall benchmark to be so the fund manager will try to beat that particular benchmark so assuming if they get eight percent they will already beat that particular benchmark and they will be in the profitable region so how we can actually break this down into our daily personal finances is assuming if our monthly expenses is about 500 ringgit maybe we want to buy stocks that will give us maybe dividend yields of 800 ringgit that way we have a buffer of 300 ringgit and with that buffer of 300 ringgit we can either spend it on random stuff or maybe we can reinvest and make a bit more money so that's how i categorize core so why i like this category is that uh, stocks which we hold in this particular category are uh, stocks that we want to hold for the longest time which is suited based on our lifestyle and the final bit is trading this is where we will i guess go in and out a particular stock which is considered kind of speculative okay so with that i talked a little bit about the five categories i talked a little bit about how i stock pick finally let's look at my i guess uh, investments so as i mentioned to you i've been buying in maybank and this was during september i really gave that particular call and right now yeah it kind of i guess uh, appreciated by about 17 percent and the other one the hotel groups which i'm investing in uh my acquisition price was i guess 72 cents and today is about 85 cents so that's about 19 percent uh i guess appreciation in the overall portfolio uh hibiscus is an oil and gas stock i think if you guys watch my earlier episodes you can see that i, I bought one share uh, one of the reasons why is uh, at this point in time i'm looking at the oil and gas uh, counters should the counters be attractive enough i will have a buy trigger and i'll just kind of buy some oil and gas stocks uh, and as i mentioned to you also i'm also looking at the property stocks um, in my earlier episodes okay so to conclude so how i actually pick a stock is based on reading newspaper articles then i have a view which sectors may benefit and which sectors may not benefit or may have a adverse uh, impact on on that on that particular sector and then based on that i do a bottom up which i will do some stock picking and i will look at the financials i'll do some forecasting and i think uh i think one of the lessons which i learned which i want to share with you guys is that if you notice with regards to glove i actually saw that particular trend on february when there was no news it was relatively quiet and uh, yeah if i would have bought and uh, held that particular position uh, you know things would be a bit uh, things would be a bit different but having said that um i have this particular rule uh, whereby if newspapers were to talk about that particular sector i would stay away from it one of the reasons why is that by by the time news talks about it it will it will already been overbought in in my mind and that's where i want to kind of sell uh, that particular stock uh, also over here what i want to say is that we can never time the ups and downs and that's one of the reasons why i always say that uh, if you want to buy break it up into a couple of buckets and if you want to sell break it up into a couple of buckets we can never 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 um time 
when is the best time to to enter and exit so i guess it's a note to myself also you know um i'm i'm not the best market timer so uh and none of us can actually uh time the market uh and that's one of the reasons why I keep saying uh if you like a particular sector uh, and you forecast that particular sector is going to go up buy it in small increments and sell it in small increments at least that's a lesson i learned should you have any other lessons uh please put it down in the comment section that way we can have a discussion so with that guys uh i thank you so very much and i hope to see you in the next episode